Hey there, artists. So, today we are going to make some silly pumpkins, or we're going to start some silly pumpkins. So, for some of you, this might be a review, but this is how we're going to draw our pumpkin. We are going to get a piece of watercolor paper. Mine's even got a tear in it, but that's okay. I'll make it a beautiful oops. You are gonna turn your paper horizontally, not vertically horizontal. And the first thing we do is always the same. We write down our name, Miss Langdon. So you've got two shots. If you mess up on this side, you can always flip it over, but you can't get a new piece of paper. So don't forget to draw light until you've got it right. So when I draw with the pencil, I draw so light like a ghost. But because you're on camera or I'm on camera, I'm gonna draw kind of dark so you can see what I'm doing. To start a really cool pumpkin, you are going to make a oval-ish or hot doggy shape right in the middle of your paper vertically. Try your best, all right? So, once you have made your either hot dog shape or your little oval shape, you are going to put a top dot and a bottom dot, and you are going to connect the top dot to the bottom dot. Does it look like a pumpkin yet? Nope, I'll keep going. I'll do the same thing on the other side, top dot, to bottom dot. You see how the bottom dot just goes in and it doesn't go under, it goes like straight at the dot. That would be, that's a good tip, all right? So I'm gonna say that again when I'm drawing this one because I'm gonna go around again. Go up and out. And as you go to the bottom, this is a little more advanced, I'm just gonna go straight at that dot. That'll give my bottom a little bit more bottomy. Top dot. I got my little tear to the bottom dot. I'm gonna go straight at it, not under it. All right, if you don't like your pumpkin again, try it again on the back. You might wanna do that anyway so you can see which one you like the best. Then I can go ahead and add a stem. What's a good shape for a stem? I hope you're thinking rectangle-ish, not oval-ish. So, from the top, I'm just gonna go right to the top of the paper. And I'm even gonna make mine curve a little bit. Or I can go straight, it doesn't matter. Boop, boop. Now in the next class, we are cutting these out. I'm gonna say that again, folks. We are gonna cut these out. So make sure that you're um, taking your time and drawing well. Okay, guys, when you're happy with your pumpkin, we are going to use a regular Sharpie. And we are gonna trace all of our lines going really slowly. If your Sharpie is not working well, should you continue to use that Sharpie or should you replace it and get a new one? Definitely new one. And with the one that isn't working well, we'll have like a pile of those or something because we don't want to put them back in the container. Then somebody else is just going to use those. I love my pumpkin so far. And I use most of the paper. If I wanted you to draw a teeny weeny little pumpkin, I would have given you a teeny weeny little paper. When you're done, make sure the cap goes back on your Sharpie and you return it. All right, folks, for the coloring, I am not going to use just regular pumpkin colors, although you can use regular pumpkin colors. I'm gonna go ahead and do a different technique with you all. So, I need two things. Well, maybe I wanna color in the stem brown. That, I'm just gonna keep regular. Or you can color whatever, I don't care. I'm not really gonna color it all in, I'm just gonna outline it right now. Pay attention to this. You gotta do the Sharpie first, then the outlining second. For your actual pumpkin though, you need to think about what color you wanna do, all right? So, I already picked a paint color that I wanna use. I'm gonna use this bright, hot pinkish. 
So what I want to do is I want to pick a marker that's the closest on the color wheel to this color. What color do you think out of these markers closely matches this color? I think there's two. I could choose red. That kind of goes with it. Or I could choose purple because there's also a little purple in this. This is like a mixture of purple and red. But I'm going to go ahead and choose purple. All right. Once again, I am going to outline my uh, pumpkin entirely with purple. Now I'm not using the very tip. Those are good for tiny lines, but I went thick lines. And so I'm using the chisel. The chisel is the flat edge. I've turned my marker and I'm making a flat edge. Do you see how slowly I'm going to make sure I'm doing a great job? Almost finished. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. Boop. I'm gonna get my water. Swish, wipe, blot. I like to do that to begin with. And we're gonna make it extra fancy right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my new color and I'm gonna go around the edges first. You can see the purple underneath it. And then with the inside of each segment, I'm going to swoosh, wipe, but leave the water on your paintbrush. And I'm just going to smoosh it. Now I gotta do this while each segment is still kind of wet. So I'm not doing the whole thing at once. All right, let's try it again. I got some the, the paint, wipe it on the lip so it doesn't drip. Trace both edges all the way around the pumpkin segment. It's the piece of the pumpkin. Get water on my brush. I don't guess I don't really need to clean it. And fill it in the middle. So it should be a little bit darker on the edges. And if you're really observant, you can see what's happening with the purple paint or the purple marker. Do you see that it's loosening? It's getting a little bit more watery. Markers can turn into paint. And I can show it to you when I do that brown stem. Hold on. Get some water. I don't even really need to wash my brush. And I could fill in the middle. All right. Dip it. Wipe it on the lip so it doesn't drip. Trace it with the paint. The purple line just gives a little something, something. Dip it in the water, don't necessarily need to wash it. Last one, trace all the way around it. All the way around it. Get some water and fill it in. All right, so let me show you that stem, friends, and then it's going to be your turn. I'm going to totally wash my brush. Swoosh. Wipe. Oh, but I need a little water on it, so I'm not going to blot it. Now, watch when I go around the brown. That is how markers turn into paint. So really, we didn't even need paint for this. So, but I just like the way the paint adds a little something, something extra. That's my pumpkin. It's going to go have to go on the drying rack until next time when we add a silly face and a background. Happy arting today.